Hi Church, Stephen Easterbrook here, a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today we're looking at another Jesus, another Gospel. And we're going to be looking uh, at first at uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 38. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set men against his father, and daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves sons or daughters more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Yeah, very strong words. Very difficult for us to hear these difficult words. But the world today presents us with, with this great deception of Jesus, of the church, of the gospel message itself. And scripture tells us that in these last days, in these last days, people will no longer put up with sound doctrine, but they will listen to only what their itching ears want to hear. This is nothing new. This has been happening um, ever since the resurrection, perhaps even older, because the prophets of old saw false prophets teaching in their time, and they were saying, peace, peace, don't worry. Uh, they were preaching what everyone wanted them to say, but people like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they all preached what people didn't want to hear because it was the word of God he preached in season and out of season and that was what they preached they preached the truth whereas the false prophets preached a word of something nice which is false and today I want to point out to you several areas uh, that our world where we can see that it will not put up with sound doctrine, where they will invent a Jesus that they like and not one of the scripture. And this is how we can see to see our way straight by looking at the word, trusting in the word, and how we can guard our hearts in this battle for your soul, which is really what's at stake here. So we begin with another Jesus. And this is what's really happening now. When we say Jesus, it isn't always the same thing. If you look at Mormonism's uh, Jesus, it's not the same. He's the brother of Lucifer, so he's just like another angel. We look at uh, JWs, Je Jehovah's Witness. They have a Jesus who is not fully divine, and so on and so on. Uh, so we begin with this other Jesus. From the text that we just read, many today don't know the Jesus of Scripture because we're not reading the Bible. And that's dangerous. And they believe that he was a sinless man. Well, the people who are looking at this, and often we see him as a sinless man, and the some of the Pentecostals, the Bethel churches, would say that he was also the first to be born again. That was through his resurrection. The first, resur the first firstborn. And he's also a man. And that we can be like him. He's our example. That we might be able to do even greater things. Because he did them first. It's actually a total blasphemy. And when you mention sin, people are always up in arms about it. They don't like to talk about sin. So they use different words like mistakes. People are up in arms and they say, that's not my Jesus. I don't believe in a Jesus like that. I like my Jesus all kind and lovey-dovey. 
And he's, my Jesus is all of our peace. But what about Christ here? Christ the divider. Christ who brings a sword. How do we deal with a Christ who brings conflict? This device of God is as old as the, New, the Old Testament. Babel. The Tower of Babel. This Tower of Babel where languages were separated. They were divided by their languages when they worshipped themselves, putting them their ability to be like God above worshipping God. And we see this, this reflected in the, New, in the New Testament in Revelation with the city of Babylon, showing that we're doing the same thing in our society today putting ourselves above God and above others. If Christ is not central, if he is not Lord of your life, well then no conflict. No one's going to be you know, fighting you about what you believe. And often when he is Lord, the ultimatum comes. Give up this faith. Don't trust in Jesus or your family will go, or your life will be threatened. He does bring peace, though. Just not, as, not as the world understands this peace. It is peace with God. It is being justified, made right with God, having peace with Him, eternal peace. Does He always, is Jesus always divisive? Not in all things. When it comes to false teaching, he is, he is divisive. When people oppose the gospel, he divides. But he is also one who unites in peace. And it is only through Christ and having faith in him. That we, and he even says that we may be one in John, just as I and the Father are one. People look at this other Jesus and they say, this is the Jesus I worship. He wouldn't hurt a fly. And I'm not going to say meek and mild. I'm going to say he's weak and mild, this Jesus that people worship. He wears jeans and a t-shirt and he does the Macarena. Holding hands with Krishna and Buddha. It's a horrible imagery, but that's what I, I've seen on YouTube. Everything's groovy with this Jesus. He's hip. He's a hipster, and it's all rubbish. It's rubbish, and it's, it's blasphemous. That is not Christ. That is not the Christ that endured torment and death on the cross, that we might be part of his family, that we might have our sins washed away, that we might become new creations in Christ. He died. He was raised to life, and he has all authority in heaven and on earth. He is owed our respect and our worship. But today, what do we see in many churches? We see people rolling around on the floor, laughing hysterically, acting drunk, babbling in all sorts of funny words that no one understands. And they're calling that the work of God. That's true blasphemy. More than just saying a word as a swear word, that's far worse. Now I want to talk about another vital deception of the gospel. Now it's regarding the teaching on hell. And I want to look at where these things go wrong. There's preachers like Rob Bell, among others who won't believe in hell or have a different version of it where he says love wins because he won't or they won't accept a loving God that a loving God could cause eternal suffering over some sin. So what so many people do here is to break the first and the second commandments that you shall have no other gods and do not make 
an idol that is an image of God. And in so doing, what they do is they miss the gospel of grace. By doing away with hell, you miss the gospel of grace. What we would miss is that all peoples, everyone, is destined for hell. We are all under God's wrath, every single human being on the face of this earth. We're already destined, and we're under God's wrath, and we're going to hell. But note this, because that's the bad news. Here's the good news. God, who is rich in mercy and full of grace, is able to save. He's able to save us from wrath and hell in believing on his son, Jesus Christ, crucified, that he dealt with your sin at that cross. It is a true picture of love. It is a picture of justice and a picture of salvation. If you understand that hell is what we're being saved from. God doesn't send people to hell. He saves people from hell. Now on a personal note, I wanted to mention something about what R.C. Sproul said. And he describes from the scriptures, people in hell, as two things, weeping and gnashing of teeth. The gnashing of teeth are people who hate God. And they will be doing the same thing in hell. Gnashing their teeth at God saying, I hate you. Arr. Nash, nash. Staying angry. Now the weeping are for those who know that God was right and that they deserve to be in hell. And they will weep. On a personal note, there was a time when I doubted and thought that I'd committed the unforgivable sin and I tried many other things and found them all to be false. Other religions, uh, other means of therapy, nothing worked. And then I continued into God's message in the scripture. And I found him to be true. But I still, when I read passages like Hebrews 6, that said once you've tasted of, of the gospel, once you reject it, you cannot once again claim it. And... It was, it was years. I went back to the church and I knew that it was the truth. But even if I was condemned, I knew that I had to be where the truth was. And then my pastor came and said to me, you have not committed the unforgivable sin. You have repented and you love Christ. And that was the greatest burden of me, that God's grace covered me. And that's what he's talking about here, weeping. That even if we ended up in hell, we would know that God is right. But it is wonderfully glorified, full of glory, that God does not do that. He is faithful to his children, and he will lift you up when you are humble. What also happens is, is there is a disconnect between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Luke 24, Jesus pushes that out of the way. He says, he is in the Old Testament, he's in the writings, he's in the law, and he's in the prophets. There's no disconnect. He's not a different God. Uh, many people are pushing that. I'm going to come to a close in a moment here. But if you believe in a Jesus that's not found in Scripture, who suffered and died on the cross for you, who is alive, who's risen and ascended on high, who's Lord of all, and seek him in the word. Pray that he would reveal himself through that word. And you will find him. You will find life. 
but it wouldn't be easy. It wouldn't be easy. Remember that sword that Jesus brings. Brother against father. Family members against family members. False teachers say that it will be easy. That it, they, That's their claim. Your best life now. No. You will be rejected on account of Christ. That's what's going to happen. Because of your love for Jesus, however great will be your reward in eternity. Beware of mistaking God's justice apart from his love. His grace redeems you from hell, from sin, and everything that separates you from him. His grace is sufficient, as it was for me when I didn't even know. His grace is enough, as Paul says. And he was guilty of killing Christians. He can bring you into the safety and the rest of his eternal kingdom through repentance and faithfully trusting Jesus as the Lord of, of your life. So how to avoid being led away by another Jesus or another gospel? Remain in Christ, as he says in John 15. Remain in Christ and he will remain in you. Know that the word, know the word of the gospel, the Bible. And don't be ignorant of God's purpose for your life. You will find therein all you need for a God-filled life in Christ. I want to read to you one last passage. You'll know it well. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now note this. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of of the only Son of God. See, we all stand condemned until we believe and go on believing in the Lord Jesus. And that is what I urge you to do today. Don't follow another Jesus that says a whole lot of other things. This is it. Trust in the Lord Jesus for your salvation. And you will have moved from darkness to light. Do that today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your message of salvation. That, you've, that you can save people. And that you would save us from hell. And into your kingdom, into your family, from darkness to light. Help us to know your word. Let us not be ignorant of your purpose for our lives. That we would be with you and enjoy you forever. And we praise you for the work of Jesus and for his authority and for the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. I will see you soon.